Hello, my name is Alicia Morris and I'm the Open Research Coordinator within the Research Integrity Team here at Wiley. Here is a presentation about registered reports that was given as part of a series of open research workshops in 2020 to several UK universities, all in partnership with the UK Reproducibility Network. So firstly, what are registered reports? Well, registered reports are a type of article format that involves peer review of the study design before the data are collected, and they can get you an in-principle acceptance before you start your study. They provide a route to feedback at an early stage in your study, which means you can receive feedback on your research question and your methodology before you get your full study underway. Now, let's look a bit closer at how registered reports actually work. Firstly, researchers submit the study proposal to a journal before the study starts. At that point, stage one peer review happens, and the emphasis here is on the importance of the research question and the rigour of the methods before the research is started, and thus decision making on whether to publish the paper is not actually focused on results or outcomes. If the peer review of that is positive, the paper is accepted in principle. Once the paper is accepted in principle, the stage one registered report can be registered in a repository or published by the journal. On completion of the study, stage two peer review ensures that the study is consistent with the proposed research plan and that it draws appropriate conclusions. Providing that the study is consistent with what was laid out in stage one, the stage two registered report is then published. This can also be linked to the stage one report if the two pages were published at separate stages. For further hints and tips on how to prepare a registered report, you can click on either of the two links at the bottom of this slide. And you can also access the UK Reproducibility Network set of primers, which explains registered reports in further detail there too. So we all know that reproducibility is key for open research. And on this slide is Brian Nozick, the Executive Director of the Centre for Open Science. He and his colleagues developed some really valuable guidelines on ways to improve the transparency, openness and reproducibility of research. He made the point that we can make meaningful progress to increase the reproducibility of research by being more transparent about the steps we take during the research process. So by sharing data, by documenting and sharing the guidelines and protocols we've used, and also by using registered reports as a research format. In using registered reports, you make it completely clear about what you are going to do for your research and how you are going to do it in the stage one report. And this prevents such practices like cherry picking only the exciting results, harking, which is hypothesizing after research is known, and publication bias, where editors are only interested in really interesting results. All of this is prevented as the in-principle acceptance is based on your research question and methodology before the study has been carried out and before the results are known. Registered reports were also born out of the reproducibility crisis in psychology in 2015, where the Centre for Open Science and Science of the Journal tried to replicate 100 key psychology studies and found that they could only reproduce some findings in 39 of them. So by outlining your research question and methods clearly and precisely in the first stage, this means that regardless of the results, not only is your work still published, even if you didn't get the results you are hoping for, but your work is easily reproducible and transparent, and this works towards the goal of open research. So what do they look like? Well, as you can see on this slide, they look exactly the same as our regular articles. Here is an example on the left of a stage one study design, which includes the research question and the methodology. And on the right is a stage two, which is the full registered report. So they are both citable. They have individual DOIs for both stage one and stage two, so you can cite either stage if you want to. Also, if you have an ORCID, these can still be attached to the article, as it would if it was just a regular article. And as an added bonus for these examples, both of them have open peer review as well, so you can click on a link and read what the reviewers thought about these two. So what have we learned so far? There are currently over 280 journals offering registered reports, and for more information on these, including a list of the journals which currently accept registered reports, you can click on the link on the slide, which links to the Centre for Open Sciences website. And of these 288 journals, 52 of them are Wiley, and we welcome registered reports there. The subject areas range from psychology, neuroscience, ecology, 
the life and the health sciences and engineering, and they really do cover such a broad range of disciplines. So while we also buy into the theoretical practices of registered reports, we also want to see how they are working in practice. So last year, we surveyed editors, authors and reviewers for their thoughts on registered reports, which I will cover in the next slide. We also published the survey as a preprint, so if you would like to read more about the survey, you can find that on the slide. We also created a poster to summarise our findings, which is also linked on the slide below the preprint. So what do researchers who actually published registered reports think about them? Well, on this slide, here's why our researchers told us why they chose to submit their research as a registered report. The most common answer on the pie chart was to follow practices that increase reproducibility or transparency. And this was also followed by the fact that researchers valued the offer of in principle acceptance at their chosen journal and the reassurance that their research would be published regardless of their results, providing that they followed their methodology as stated in the stage one report. We also found that researchers liked the benefit of peer review prior to conducting their experiment and collecting their data. This meant that their methodology and their research question could be critiqued and potentially improve their research all before they actually had to conduct it. And we also included a quote from one of our researchers, Matthias Mitner, who we did a blog with too, which is linked to on the slide. And he said that the experience was nothing less than amazing and that the reviewers were incredibly helpful and contributed to pages of comments and suggestions and overall ended up helping to improve the quality of his research. We also found that researchers thought the format was easy to use, that the stage one process and the reviewers were very helpful and that they would all recommend the registered reports format to their peers for research. And not only did we find that our researchers love registered reports, but editors also welcomed them too, and they recognised that they helped to improve the standards of research in terms of rigour and transparency. We also found that they were very likely to recommend launching registered reports to the editor of another journal. And one of our editors at Cancer Reports, Nidhi Bansal, she thought that registered reports challenged the status quo and how things are traditionally done in research and publishing. They call for more transparency, trust and rigour in the research process. You can also read more about what Nidhi thought of registered reports and why editors should embrace them in the blog linked to on the slide. So what's next for registered reports? Well, on this slide is a link to a Nature article that was written by Chris Chambers, who pioneered registered reports. This article has more information for you to learn about the creation of registered reports and speaks to their growth and funder involvement. Other future developments might include more journals encouraging registered reports as an article type like we are here at Wiley. Also, the possibility of integrating registered reports with tools like CodeOcean to link the data analysis and the protocol together. We also think that we could extend review back towards the research grants, which could get your funding confirmed and get an acceptance in principle at the same time. And so, like we did in our open research workshops with the UK universities we visited and with the UK Reproducibility Network, we'll leave you with this question to think about. What do you think about registered reports? Thank you for watching.